This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off-Track Betting. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. 20 races to bring you. Up first, a couple of races from Calder. On the turf, going a mile. Summer front, the four to five favorite in this year's edition of the Miami Mile. They're all in line. And they're off. El Commodore sprints out from the outside gate, wants the lead, and looks like he'll get it pretty easily. Ali Oop Oop runs into the second spot. Empire Builder is third. Summer Front well held down along the hedge. Gourmet Dinner is three lengths off the pace today. Then Awake at T-Wire inside Cool Blue Red Hot. And Mucho Mas Macho takes his usual early spot at the back of the pack while saving ground as they go into the first turn. Not real fast early on for El Commodore, and he's still able to cross over and get a clear lead. 24 seconds flat over the good turf for El Commodore. His lead is just over a length from Awake at T-Wire. Alley Oop Oop moving up on the outside. Empire Builder was able to save ground down along the hedge. Gourmet Dinner is hard held fifth and looks like he's eager to go for Sebastian Madrid now within three lengths of the lead. Then Cool Blue Red Hat alongside of Summer Front. They're in behind that lead group with four to make up. Mucho Mas Macho remains the trailer. 48-2 and two is a half mile for El Commodore as he tries to take them all the way in the Miami Mile. El Commodore into the far turn by almost a length and a half from Alley Oop Oop. Empire Builder still on hold third. Gourmet Dunners under a full out drive. Mucho Mas Macho is starting to get involved with Summer Front from the back of the pack. They're trying to reel in El Commodore who's still clearly in front. El Commodore swings for home with a clear lead. Summer Front and Joe Bravo out after him now. And Summer Front set down for the drive and here he comes. Summer Front blowing on by El Commodore at the 16th pole. Empire Fire Builder third, then Alley Oop Boop at Summer Front. A perfect trip takes the Miami Mile. El Commodore was second tight for third, either Empire Builder or Alley Oop Oop. And Summer Front with Joe Bravo in the saddle for the first time, who was 0 for 4 since winning the Duluth at Saratoga in July. The question was, would he find room? Well, the sea parted open, plenty of space, draws off to win by one and a half lengths for Christoph Clement. And Waterford Stable returning $3.80. El Commodore finishes second. And Empire Builder third in the Miami Mile. And somewhere between the Miami Mile and two races later, the rains come. We're on the dirt. Gray overcast. Sloppy sealed racetrack for the musical romance. Starship Truffles, 9 to 5. And they're off. Perfect start. Who is Camille from the inside gate showing speed? Latin Rocks is now coming on through to head him off. Isabel's Thunder is trying to go with her. And there goes Starship Truffles with Jesus Rios. Now into the second spot. Centrique on the far side. And Frolic's Revenge is right in there three lengths off the lead. They're followed right now by Bahia Beach. She's about seven lengths off the pace. Been passed by Prize Informant. And the trailer is Red Bud Road. Latin Rocks by almost two lengths past the half mile pole. Who is Camille? Starship Truffles. Centrique three wide as they run to the far turn. Isabel's Thunder is fifth right now and only five lengths off the lead. Prize Informant, nine lengths to make up. Frolic's Revenge, Red Bud Road, four wide into that far turn. Bahia Beach in that back group as well. As they move to the quarter pole, it's Latin Rocks showing the way. Latin Rocks, two and a half lengths with a quarter mile from the money. Latin Rocks unchallenged thus far as they're splashing toward the top of the lane. Latin Rocks, Starship Truffles out after her. Centrique was widest into the lane. Who is Camille still in with a shot? Then Isabel's Thunder by Ia Beach from the back of the pack. Starship Truffles has run on by to take over, and her stable mate Centrique is running hard on the outside. Starship Truffles, Centrique by Ia Beach late on the scene. Starship Truffles and Jesus Rios to win the musical romance. Tight for place and show by Ia Beach inside Centrique, and Isabel's Thunder was fourth. And Starship Trouble under Jesus Rio scores the victory now 9 for 13 lifetime at Calder. You see how 
different the weather was in over about 80 minutes. Uh, Starship Truffles wins by a length and a half, returning $5.60 as the favorite. Bayani Beach finishes second, Centrique finishes third in the musical Romance. Now we turn our attention to Pimlico for a couple of races and weather uh, in the news also at Pimlico. Up first was supposed to be five furlongs on the turf. Off the turf, the Stormy Blue Stakes, Jewel of a Cat, four to five. And they're off. Sense of Reality at Casina. Here's Bridge Knight in Backyard Boogie and Jewel of a Cat of the Far Outside. Zip Cash back is taken back second last and trailing is Shenandoah Lady. Charging for the turn and they're led by Bridge Knight. Bridge Knight, the fastest filly into the turn. Jewel of a Cat, though, a very close second. At Casina is in third and Sense of Reality is in fourth and Zip Cash back. Another four back and Shenandoah Lady under a ride and trying to pick it up has seven to close in. Backyard Boogie in the back of the pack now. Top of the stretch. They make the turn for home. Bridge Knight, but Jewel of a Cat there to full attack. And Ekasina out in the center of the track. Sense of Reality is right behind them, racing in the fourth spot. And then it's Shenandoah Lady in fifth. And the leader, Jewel of a Cat now. The favorite filly, Jewel of a Cat from Ekasina is giving it a good battle, but second here to Jewel of a Cat. Jewel of a Cat to shine in the Stormy Blue Stakes. Jewel of a Cat pulling away to win two and a half or three. Ekasina was second in Sense of Reality and Shenandoah Lady Chris DiCarlo in the saddle for Ben Perkins Jr. Jewel the Cat making the first start since October 27th. Runner-up in the Salima Stakes scores the victory on the main track listed as fast in the Stormy Blues returning $3.60. Ek Hasina finishes second, Sense of Reality third. Now our scheduled dirt race of Saturday afternoon down at Pimlico. The Primnetta Stakes bowl the fair. One to two. Lined up and off right away. Enchanté will actually get the first call from the gate. Irish Exchange is up there too. Scrum Diddly Umptious to the far outside. Exclusive Warrior right there between and fourth. And Pretty Miss Trippy and Bold Affair trailing. And she's only about four from the front of Irish Exchange. Is going to go for it. Kendrick Carmooch gives a spooch there to Irish Exchange to open up. Open up on Scrum Diddly Umptious by two lengths. And Exclusive Warrior is in third. Bold Affair outside racing in the clear from fourth. Enchanté drops to second last and Pretty Miss Trippy trailing the field. Irish Exchange blazing the way into the far turn of 23-2 opening quarter for Irish Exchange. Scrum diddly umperson here is Bold Affair. Up on the outside, looming at the quarter pole. She's into second now and coming after Irish Exchange as they make the turn for home a 46 and 4 half mile. Bold Affair out in the center of the track. Well, she tried to her annex once again at the starting gate. She's run right up and past Irish Exchange with one furlong left to go. Bold Affair, Irish Exchange trying to give her a tussle to the inside. Abel Castellano Jr. working on Bold Affair. Irish Exchange is giving her all down to the fence. Scrum Diddly Umptious is third. Bold Affair, and it is another winning affair in the Primanetta Stakes for Bold Affair, Irish Exchange, Scrum Diddly Umptious, and El Chante. Back to back in the Primanetta for a Bold Affair. The chestnut mare gives you a scare when going into the gate, but she did it again. Bold Affair, once again, difficult to load at the starting gate, but... Once she gets in there, boy, business as usual. Howard Wolfendale sends out the $3 winner of the Primanetta Stakes, Abel Castellano, El Board for the one-half length victory in the Primanetta. Now on to the featured stakes race on Saturday afternoon. Unfortunately, also off the turf, this is the Henry Clark 8, too fast to catch, 4 to 5. And they're off. Labango out first. Eight to fast to catch and see Toby concealed identity and done talking is last sorting out. Eight to fast to catch with that speed to Pimlico's first turn. So Forrest Boyce and eight to fast to catch settling up front now. A length and change in front from Labango in second. Concealed identity and done talking and see Toby on hold in the back of the pack with only four and a half to five lengths off of eight to fast to catch. Rather controlled today is eight to fast to catch at 24 and one opening quarter. Six 
furlongs left to go. Eight to fast to catch. Well reserved up front. A length and a half from Labango and Concealed Identity. Here is Dunn talking in the clear from fourth. Now drops four to fly. Flanks off that lead and C. Toby is last. Eight to fast to catch. Sails on with four and a half furlongs left to go. 47 and four half mile. Chased by Labango. Is asked for a bit more run. Concealed Identity still inside. Then it's Dunn talking. Five from the front of eight to fast to catch and C. Toby last. Far turn run, three furlongs to go. Eight to fast to catch. Lobango and Kendrick Caramouche now fully extended to play catch up here with eight to fast to catch who cruises past the 5 16 pole. 11 and four for the six furlongs. They make the turn for home. Eight to fast to catch. Three from Lobango. Then done talking concealed identity in C. Toby. A homeward bound a furlong and a half to the Pimlico wire. Eight to faster catch is that leader by three lengths. Lobango has been the chaser throughout with one furlong left to go. Eight to fast to catch with plenty left. Eight to fast to catch and Lubango. One, two, pretty much all the way around. Eight to fast to catch and Forrest Boys to win the Henry S. Clark by four lengths. Lubango was second and it's tied for third. Concealed identity in a race with Dunn talking for the show photo. And Forrest Boyce, ladies and gentlemen, who has been red hot at this young meet, makes every poll a winning one, winning by a handful, scoring at $3.80. The old 14-16 exacta, ladies and gentlemen, in the off-the-turf. Henry Clark, for a second, La Bango, and Concealed Identity finishes third in the Clark. Not the Clark, the Henry Clark. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have action from the Big doing Saturday night at Charlestown and Hawthorne. It's a daily double you just gotta play. Every Thursday and Friday in April, every time you order two items off the 7-Eleven Sports Grill lunch menu, you'll get a $2 daily double wager from Capital OTB. Only at the 7-Eleven Sports Grill inside the Clubhouse Racebook. No matter where in the world you are, the excitement of wagering on live horse racing is just a click away. CapitalOTB.com offers live streaming, free past performances, analysis and selections from professional handicappers, and a simple, safe, and secure wagering platform. And best of all, it's surcharge free. CapitalOTB.com, the better choice. I'm Seth Merrill. Join me weekdays at 9 a.m. for Racing Across America. We look at important races from across the country, get insights from top handicappers and analysts, and preview the upcoming week in racing. That's Racing Across America, weekdays at 9, here on OTB TV. Saturday night, the big night annually at Charlestown Racing. Larry Comos in to do the calling. Up first, the Robert Hilton Memorial, even money, free world. And they're all in line. They're racing in the Robert Hilton Memorial. And it's a good start for Free World. And Ronson is right alongside. Outside of them, My Jordan, indefinable humor. And you got that going for you. Is five deep as they race by us for the first time. And Honor the Vow trails the field. It's Ronson and Free World together. And My Jordan is right with them to the outside. Three wide as they move into the turn. And caught way out there is You Got That Going For You running along in fourth. Then it's indefinable humor, fifth toward the inside, and it's three lengths more back to Honor the Vow, who trails the field after a 22 and four quarter. Onto the back stretch they go, and Free World is in front. Ronson, three quarters of a length behind. My Jordan, third to the outside. Break of two. Then you got that going for you. On the inside, indefinable humor. And last but gaining ground is Honor the Vow. A half mile goes in 46 and one. And they're moving into the far turn, and it's Free World and Jose Lescano in front. They've got a two-length lead into the turn. And then it's My Jordan. Here comes Honor the Vow, sweeping up three wide. Ronson's got to pick it up fourth along the rail. And you got that going for you is next, but it is Free World. And Free World turns for home with a five-length lead. Honor the Vow, clearly second now, leaving the others behind as Free World comes to the final strides well clear. Free World and Jose Lascano win the Robert Hilton Memorial. Honor the Vow was second. You got that going for you. Got third and then my Jordan. Jose Lascano, first time in the saddle. Free World coming off of an eight length entry level allowance victory. Scores by six and a half lengths. 
in the Robert Hilton Memorial for Tommy Amos and Maggie Moss. They return $4 even. Honor the Val finish second. You got that going for you. Finishes third. Up next, we're going to shorten up to four and a half furlongs for the Charlestown Dash Handicap. Six to five favorite, Immortal Eyes. Omac goes back in. Ready for the start. They're off. And it's fearsome, firing out fast, and Immortal Eyes is away second to the inside. Yukon Wildcat also fast from the start. On the far outside, it's Tomac, and now Immortal Eyes has taken all the way to last. Immortal Eyes is last up the backstretch as Fearsome leads the way. On top by a length and a half, Viger stormed through on the inside. Yukon Wildcat just sizzled between those two. Then it's Tomac, followed by Tomorrow's Tail, and Immortal Eyes is last and going wide on the far turn. He's starting to pick it up now. It's Fearsome in front. Fearsome the leader as they come to the top of the lane. Yukon Wildcat is second. Immortal Eyes is coming, but he's wide on the far outside. They're into the stretch. And Fearsome is the leader. And Fearsome's got a five-length lead. Immortal Eyes will not get to him. Fearsome all the way in the Webb Snyder Charlestown Dash. Immortal Eyes was second, and it's close for third between Jess Sizzle and Yukon Wildcat. But Fearsome with J.D. Acosta in the saddle, Breaks out on top, never looks back, wins by three lengths, returning $6.60. Fearsome now three for three at Charlestown first time stake. Immortal Eyes, who was nine for ten lifetime at Charlestown, finishes second. Yukon Wildcat third in the Charlestown Dash handicap. Continuing along at Charlestown, we're going to go seven furlongs in two turns in the Sugar Maple Stakes. Holiday Soiree, your six to five favorite. 80 Get Excited's in, and they're all in line. They're off in the Sugar Maple. Holiday Soiree on the inside, right out to the front. Dangerous Vixen and Dance to Bristol going with her, and Dangerous Vixen grabs the lead early. Holiday Soiree back running in second, Dance to Bristol is third. Kalambaka Queen is in fourth, dropping off four and a half lengths from the front. Then it's a break of another two to Katie Get Excited and Bayonne to the outside. So it's Dangerous Vixen leading the way early through an opening quarter mile in 23 and one fifth seconds. Holiday Soiree a length and a half behind in second. Dance to Bristol is third to the outside by two. Katie get excited, Kalambaka Queen alongside of her. Bayonne is last of the field, six lengths off the lead. It's Dangerous Vixen and Holiday Soiree and they're ahead apart. Dance to Bristol is just outside of them, running in third by three. Katie get excited, Kalambaka Queen and Bayonne all right together after a 47 flat half mile. And they're into the far turn now. And there goes Dance to Bristol. And Dance to Bristol has taken the lead and has done it easily, pulling away from Holiday Soiree. Then it's Bayonne and Calabaca Queen, and they're into the stretch. And Dance to Bristol's all alone. Dance to Bristol and Xavier Perez running up the score. And they're geared down to an awesome win in the Sugar Maple. Holiday Soiree was second, Bayonne was third, and Calabaca Queen finished fourth. But dance to Bristol, ladies and gentlemen, with the X-Man. Xavier Perez seems like the uh, Pimlico special, uh, Pimlico connections, I should have said, went over to Charlestown. Dance to Bristol wins by nine comfortable lengths, returning $4.60 as the second choice in the wagering holiday soiree, making the first start in 2013, finishes second as your favorite, Bayonne, third in the Sugar Maple. The 12th race on the card Saturday night, the Charlestown Classic, now for $1.5 million purse at 1 to 5. Game on, dude. Ready for the start. They're off in the Charlestown Classic. And percussion is being sent to the front by Kendrick Harmouche, and Game On Dude will sit just to the outside of him in the initial stages. These two take them into the first turn, one, two. Isn't he perfect is running in 30s, three lengths off the lead, then Kaisha Electronica to the inside. Ron the Greek's got five lengths to make up as they make their way toward the top of the stretch. And the leader is percussion. 
Percussion, a 38 to one shot, leads the way to an opening quarter mile in an easy 25 and four fifth seconds. And game on, dude, will set a length and a half off of him in second. Taisha Electronic is third, isn't he? Perfect is fourth. Clubhouse ride with five to make up, and Ron the Greek just lags behind there. He's 11 lengths off the lead in the race to the clubhouse turn. So it's been percussion so far, and he went 49 and one for a half mile. It's been a slow pace. Game on, dude is glued to him on the outside. He's just to the outside of this long shot percussion onto the back stretch. Three lengths to Kaisha Electronica. Clubhouse ride is sent for more speed. Isn't he perfect? Is dropped back. And Ron the Greek is gaining ground now. He's within seven lengths of the front. Halfway up the back stretch. And game on, dude is right alongside of percussion. They are nose to nose up front. Clubhouse ride is getting close to them third. Kaisha Electronica has got to pick it up. And then it's Ron the Greek. And game on, dude has taken the lead on the far turn. Clubhouse ride comes to him. Ron the Greek continues steady progress. Outside of percussion, Keisha Electronica's fifth, and they're into the stretch, and it's game on, dude. Clubhouse ride to the outside, and Ron the Greek is third. A final 16th for game on, dude. He's reaching for the wire. Ron the Greek's coming up the fence. Clubhouse rides on the outside, but game on, dude, has won the Charlestown Classic over Clubhouse ride and Ron the Greek. Percussion finished fourth in a final time of one minute 52.27 seconds. Game on, dude, has won the Charlestown Classic. Mike Smith has been a great fit on Game on, dude. They score the one half length victory coming off of the impressive San Diego Handicap and the San Antonio No Dubai World Cup this year. Instead, they take the winner's purse of $1 million in the fifth running of the Charlestown Classic. Runner-up in 2011 to Duke of Mischief in the slop, but this time on a fast racetrack, they get the money. Clubhouse Ride finishes second. Ron the Greek, third. Game on dudes, lifetime earnings now, $4.7 million. Going out to Chicago for a couple stakes races on Saturday afternoon. Up first to 60 sales handicap. Your six to five favorite disposable pleasure. They're off. Little Miss Protocol going for the lead. Devious Intent came away well in between those two as brushed by a star. Here's Disposable Pleasure moving up on the far outside. Royal Lahaina came away fifth in the early trailer, the late running Maud S. And they run into the first turn. Devious Intent has the lead. Little Miss Protocol right there, second. Disposable Pleasure still racing three wide as they move on to the back stretch. And then Brushed by a Star is next. And then to the outside, Royal Lahaina. Maudash trails the field. They make their way to the back stretch. Six furlongs to go in the 60 sails. Devious Intent leads by a neck. Little Miss Protocol between horses, second. Disposable Pleasure out there, third. It's two and a half lengths. Brushed by a Star, fourth. Royal Lahaina, fifth. Maud S is sixth, about five and a half behind the leader. Little more than a half mile to go. It's Devious Intent, the leader. Right there between horses, Little Miss Protocol. Disposable Pleasure's been three wide throughout. And then it's brushed by a star beginning to look for racing room. Royal Lahaina close up. Maud S is right there along the inside. Four lanes covers the field as they race around the far turn. Less than three furlongs to go. Devious Intent holding firm. Little Miss Protocol right there between horses. Disposable Pleasure still three wide. Maud S now eyeing an opening along the inside. And then it's brushed by a star. Royal Lahaina on the far outside. Around the turn, they're in the stretch. Disposable Pleasure on the outside now takes the lead. Three sixteenths to go. Disposable Pleasure drops over to the inside, but she's up by three. Here comes brushed by a star. Picking up the chase second. Little Miss Protocol third. A final sixteenth for Disposable Pleasure. And it's Disposable pleasure to win the 2013 60 sales at Handy. It's disposable pleasure in front. Brushed by a star second. Little Miss Protocol third. Tight for fourth. The 2013 60 sales handicap at Hawthorne. Disposable pleasure. Javier Castellano. Disposable pleasure. First time Hawthorne with Javier Castellano in the saddle for Todd Pletcher and Glen Crest Farm. This is the Panty Raid people. They score the comfortable three and a half length victory turning. $4.40. Second choice in the wagering at 8 to 5, brushed by a star, finishes second 
and Liz Little Miz Protocol finishes third in the 35th running of the 60 sales. Up next, what often is a three-year-old prep for the Kentucky Derby, but with the change in the uh, Kentucky Derby graded point systems versus graded earnings, kind of has fallen off the map, but not for entrance. 14 in the Illinois Derby, nine to five, departing. They're off. From the outside, show some magic showing early speed. Taken by the storm between horses, came away well. Ground transport on the inside. For Dubai moves up next. Dakota Mac in between horses. Then towards the inside, Dewey Square. And then to the outside as they move into the turn, Narvaez. Abraham is next. And then to the outside, departing. Departing right now about eight lengths from the leader as they make their way to the back stretch. And on to the back stretch they go. Your leader. Ground transport, six furlongs to go. Ground transport being pressured by taken by the storm. Far outside for Dubai moves up into third. Dakota Mac between horses for Dewey Square. Right there down along the rail, fifth. Then show some magic in behind horses. Departing, moving five wide up the back stretch. Splitting horses, there goes Abraham. Then in between horses, Narvaez. And then it's two more back to find Siete de Oros. Bell's Big Bernie down along the rail next. Four greater glory. Street Spice is five wide going into the far turn and trailing with less than a half mile to go. Storm and Monarco, but he's only eight lengths behind the leader. And around the turn they go, taken by the storm. Now is taking the lead. And there goes for Dubai, moving up to be second. Abraham picks up the leader's third, departing on the outside, dropping back was ground transport. Moving towards the inside, show some magic. Looking for racing room, Nivar is that's wide open in the Illinois Derby and departing on the outside rushes up to take the lead with three sixteenths to go and it's departing now getting the lead and drawing away towards the inside for Dubai tries the battle on in between horses Siete de Oros and on the far outside Street Spice but as they come to the finish departing has the lead departing wins the Illinois Derby and departing won by almost three then it was for Dubai Siete de Oros next and Abraham came back for four and departing scores the victory under Brian Hernandez for Al Stahl Jr. returning $5.80 as the favorite at 23 to 1 for Dubai finishes second. Sieta Diarros finishes third. And in case you're keeping score at home, the winning post positions going a mile and eighth at Hawthorne, 13, 10, and 12. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be having action Thursday through Sunday at Keeneland. I'm Seth Merrill. Join me weekdays at 9 a.m. for Racing Across America. We look at important races from across the country, get insights from top handicappers and analysts, and preview the upcoming week in racing. That's Racing Across America, weekdays at 9, here on OTB TV. Hey, race fans, head down to the all-new Clubhouse Racebook and get in the game. With live horse racing on more than 250 flat screen TVs, state-of-the-art wagering terminals, fantastic food and drinks, and amazing Vegas-style atmosphere with seating for nearly 900 of your closest friends. Conveniently located at 711 Central Avenue, right off exit 5 of I-90 in Albany, the Clubhouse Racebook is the better choice. It's a daily double you just gotta play. Every Thursday and Friday in April, every time you order two items off the 7-Eleven Sports Grill lunch menu, you'll get a $2 daily double wager from Capital OTB. Only at the 7-Eleven Sports Grill inside the Clubhouse Racebook. Thursday afternoon at Keeneland, we're on the turf for the Appalachian Stakes. Three to five favorite, making the first start of the year. What are the chances? <laughs> And they're off in the Appalachian Stakes. To my Valentine from the center of the course comes out running for the early lead. She was very keyed up as the field approached the starting gate, and that is still the case. So Julianne Leperu and To My Valentine from the outside go right to the front. They have the lead by three parts of a length. Midway on the first turn, now by a length and a half, two lengths clear. Eden Prairie goes second by a half length. Bethany Bell moves up from third up on the outside. Another length and a half to overheard. Very wide out in the center of the course and fourth off the turn. Rusty Slipper moves up two spots from fifth into third. 
down toward the inside. What's the chances right behind her? Awkward move there for Midnight Ballet coming off the turn and onto the back stretch. Lost a couple of lengths. Settles out next to last. Ten lengths off the lead. Gap of six more back to Unbelievable Dream, who's last 23 and one-fifth seconds the time for the opening quarter. Eden Prairie leading to my Valentine by two lengths after a first half mile in 47 and one-fifth seconds. Long shot Bethany Bell is third by three lengths into the far turn. What's the chances in fourth? Running six lengths off the lead. Overheard is fifth on her outside. Rusty Slipper has dropped back, losing several spots around the far turn and now drops all the way out to the back of the pack. Midnight Ballet moves by her. Still seven lengths off the lead. Unbelievable Dream is still next to last. Better than a dozen lengths out. They turn for home to my Valentine. Overheard. What's the chances in between those two? Eden Prairie now fourth toward the inside. Overheard to my Valentine and Eden Prairie fighting back. What's the chances in fourth? Eden Prairie very game. Overheard is right there. Unbelievable Dream is coming late. Eden Prairie running a huge one. Unbelievable Dream coming. Overheard between them. Unbelievable Dream. From last to first for Joe El Rosario's fifth win on the card. Unbelievable dream. The New York Red for Barkley Tag. Joe El Rosario in the saddle for the first time. Running fantastically late. Scores the victory returning $11.80 as second choice in the wagering. Overheard. A brilliant performance at 10 to 1. Looked good at the eighth pole. Runner up in the Appalachian. Eden Prairie finishes third. The three to five favorite, one of the chances making the three-year-old debut, finishes fourth. Friday afternoon on the synthetic, the double dog dare stakes, six to five, mystical star. They're at the post. And they're off in the Hilliard Lions. Double Dog Dare Steak, Sisterhood, and Ice Cream Silence quick into stride. And Mystical Star, the favorite right there in between those two in the opening strides. A lot of loving comes out fourth up on the outside. Then Artemis Kitten next to last. And in Glorious will be the trailer. Six lengths off the lead into the first term. Ice Cream Silence has the lead, gets over to the rail, and leads Sisterhood by just over a length midway on the first turn. Then a gap of two as they move to the back stretch to a lot of loving in third position. Followed by Artemis Kitten, who's fourth down toward the inside. Mystical Star outward from the rail and now in between horses in the fifth position. Four lengths off the lead. Inglorious alongside of her at the back as the field hits the back stretch. The opening quarter in 24 and two fifth seconds. So Sisterhood and Ice Cream Silence joined by Lotta Lovin who's third. A length off the lead on the far outside at the midpoint of the back stretch. Artemis Kitten tucked away fourth toward the inside. Two lengths off the lead. Mystical Star between horses next to last. Inglorious is right alongside of her. 49 and one-fifth seconds for the first half mile. Ice Cream Silence leads at three parts of a length. The Sisterhood who picks up the chase again along with Lot 11. And the top three are in a line midway on the far turn. Mystical Star is in fourth and still four lengths off the lead. And glorious to her outside. Artemis Kitten last against the rail. They're at the quarter pole. Lot 11 puts ahead in front. Ice Cream Silence fights back toward the inside. Short stretch, eighth of a mile to come. And then Sisterhood, who's third up on the outside, in glorious way wide with Mystical Star at the center of the racetrack. Sisterhood coming forward after Ice Cream Silence. Mystical Star still lingering far back. Ice Cream Silence with the lead. The Hilliard Lions, Double Dog Dare. Ice Cream Silence, a front-running victory for Jockey Rosie Napravnik. Ice Cream Silence, though, scores a victory by a neck for Rosie Napravnik and the good guys. They return $19.80 for G. Watts, Humphrey, and Rusty Arnold as they continue to win stakes races down at this spring meet at Keeneland. They return $19.80. Sisterhood finishes second. Artemis Kitten, the longest shot on the board, finishes third. Mystical Star, the 6-5 to five favorite, finishes fourth. And Inglorious at 2-1, to one, now 0 for 8 since winning the Queen's Plate. Couple stakes races to bring you from Saturday afternoon up first, sprinting on the turf. The Giants Causeway, Sweet Casapia, the two to one favorite. At the post. 
and they're off in the Giants Causeway Stakes. Sweet Cassiopeia and Spun Cap from the outside. Rosa Salvaje has speed down toward the inside and then Extravaganza away running in fourth. Spun Cap, Rosa Salvaje side by side for the top spot. Extravaganza a length off the lead between those two in third. Flanked by Sweet Cassiopeia in fourth. Kiss in the forest is fifth. Sensible Lady between horses is sixth. Sally Sally seventh toward her inside. Formal plan is wide at the eighth position. Sounds of the City is ninth and last. Here's Spun Cap moving up to challenge Rosa Salvaje extravaganza between those two. And then Sweet Cassiopeia, who has to go to the center of the course. 22 seconds, the time for the opening quarter. They've got a quarter mile to come. Spun Cap and Sweet Cassiopeia go one, two. Sensible Lady out in the center of the course. Extravaganza dives toward the inside. Here's Sensible Lady from the outside. Spun Cap toward the inside. And Sweet Cassiopeia between those two. Sounds of the City to fourth. Sweet Cassiopeia has a neck in front. Sweet Cassiopeia kicking on in the closing strides. Sweet Cassiopeia show Rocco Jr. to take the Giants Causeway. Head bobbing photo for place. Either spun cap or sounds of the city. And behind that pair, Sensible Lady was fourth. Joe Rocco Jr. aboard for the first time and Sweet Cassiopeia was coming off four victories in a row. You can now make it five as they score in Saturday's Giants Causeway returning $6.20. Spun cap finishes second Sounds of the City, third in the Giants Causeway. Three-year-olds up next going a mile of 16th in the Lexington Stakes, one of the wild card races for the Kentucky Derby this year. Sunbeam, five to two. They're at the post. <laughs> and they're off in the cool more Lexington Stakes. Winning cause broke alertly, but there goes Chero up from the outside. River Rocks and Pick of the Litter have early speed as well. Chero right there to their outside as the field heads to the first turn. Wings of Fortune moves very wide into the turn, but up front it is River Rocks toward the rail who has the early lead. Chero is right alongside these two matching strides. Two and a half lengths in front of Wings of Fortune who closes in from that third spot now just a length and a half off the leaders. Then a gap of two and a half more lengths behind that one to Pick of the Litter who travels in fourth. Winning cause, forwardly played for him today in fifth, just six lengths off the lead. Then a gap of two more lengths back to examine who's seventh toward the inside, then Sunbeam on the outside of that one. Hip 469 is against the rail, 10 lengths off the lead. Pure fun, the filly is alongside of him, and general election is last. They got the quarter in 23 and three, the half in 47 and three fifth seconds, and River Rocks the leader for James Graham by a length and a half, two lengths clear into the far turn. Chero backs away into the second spot by a length. Wings of Fortune is third, pick of the litter is fourth. Winning cause, outward from the rail in fifth, seven lengths off the leader followed by Examine down toward the inside. Now Examine is going to need some running room, starts moving up and picks up a few spots. Still five lengths off the lead. Winning cause and Sunbeam going to go wide. Pure Fun is in between horses. She's seventh, running five lengths from the front, but it's the short stretch. Here's Chero up to challenge River Rocks. Winning cause angles out toward the center of the racetrack as they turn for home. And then Sunbeam and General Election picks up the leaders as well. Pure Fun is still far back. Here is Winning Cause to the lead. General Election needs to find more and find it quickly and now here's pick of the litter finding an opening but winning cause takes the Coolmore Lexington for Julianne Leperu. one minute 43 and four fifth seconds winning cause Julianne Leperu. they score the $15.60 Todd Pletcher has another one ladies and gentlemen we'll see if winning cause is on to the Kentucky Derby winning cause now three for three at Keeneland, having broken the maiden and won an entry-level allowance, now adds the Lexington Stakes to his resume. General election at nearly 35 to 1 finishes second. Pick of the litter, third, with your favorite Sunbeam finishing fifth at 5 to 2. Sunday afternoon saw the return of the races to successful Dan in the Ben Ally. They're at the post. And they're off in the Ben Ally Stakes. Boisterous from the outside, successful Dan from the inside, and son of a general now moving up to put a head in front, but successful Dan right there from that inside starting spot as the field moves for the first turn. Successful Dan will have the early lead. Son of a general goes second into the turn, and then a gap of three more lengths back to Stefanozzi, who travels third in the early going. Boisterous outward from the rail is fourth. Richard's Kid is in fifth, and Hatash is sixth and last. That opening quarter in 25 seconds. 
by Successful Dan. So a controlled pace for the leader, who's on top a length and a half onto the back stretch. Son of a General, second by two and a half lengths. Stefan Oatsy, third a length. Boisterous goes fourth toward the outside. Richards Kid tucked away near the back of the pack, next to last, flanked there by Hatash at the midpoint of the back stretch. So the odds on favorite, Successful Dan, gets an opening half mile in 50 seconds here. And Julian Leperu must be grinning from ear to ear right now as he takes Successful Dan to the far turn, leading it by just over two lengths. Son of a General tries to close the gap in second, a length and a half. Stefan Oatsy is third up on the outside. Richards Kid fourth. Boisterous is fifth as the tempo quickens midway on the turn. And Hatash is last. Successful Dan to catch, leading it by two and a half, three lengths. Here's Boisterous now beginning his bid toward the outside. Richards Kid is moving up the rail in third, but Successful Dan rolls off the far turn with a five length lead. Boisterous second, Richards Kid third back toward the inside. Successful Dan shaken up by Leperu. Boisterous trying to track him down, but Successful Dan has controlled the pace every step of the way. Boisterous hasn't given up, but he's still two lengths away in second. 16th pole, Successful Dan, gate to wire to take the Ben Ally for Leperu. Boisterous was home second, Richards Kid third, son of a general was fourth. And what a return to the races it was. Julian Leperu aboard for Charlie Lepresti. Four to five on the board made it look extremely comfortable, returning $3.60 while making every step a winning one. Boisterous finishes second as the second choice and Richards Kid third in the 83rd running of the Ben Ally. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have action from Santanita and the Big A. Here in upstate New York, no one provides betters with more wagering options than Capital OTB. Our network of branch and easy bet locations stretches from the mid-Hudson Valley all the way to the Canadian border and west to central New York. So whether you need to place a bet, fund your Capital Bets account, or watch the next big race, all the action is just around the corner. A full list of our branch and easy bet locations can be found online at CapitalOTB.com. Capital OTB, the better and most convenient choice for wagering in upstate New York. Each morning on the OTB TV network, you get the very best in horse racing programming. Weekdays begin with Racing Across America, a daily conversation with racing personalities from around the country. Followed by the handicapper support. Professional handicappers share their selections and analysis of the day's racing. Weekends start with Down the Stretch, where Mark Cassano speaks with the biggest names in racing, and Steve Vick and Seth Merrill kick off Sunday morning with Loose on the Lead, offering news and a unique lineup of weekly guests, all here on OTB TV. As we turn our attention to Santa Anita on closing weekend, up first, Phillies and Mares going a mile and a quarter in the Santa Barbara Handicap. Lady is Shamrock, one to five. Field for the Santa Barbara sent on their way. Viva Carina from the outside gate as quick as center stride will take the lead. The only key in the orange cap comes through to race in second and Kayla's going to settle back in third. Double ante has floated a little wide into the turn and the favorite lady of Shamrock contend a trail early. Through the stretch first time round and it's Viva Carina. Not in any hurry at all here. Has the advantage. The only keys right there in second. On the outside, Double Ante's on a stronghold in the third spot and Kalis in the white cap. Double Ante's dropping back into fourth now and at the back we have Lady of Shamrock. Passed away a first time round, couldn't be going much lower. Viva Carina in front by just over a length. The only key is tracking from the second spot. Kalis racing along third, Double Ante is fourth and the favourite Lady of Shamrock a little closer than earlier on but still trailing now six off them. They've covered just about half the journey now, and it is still Viva Carina in front. Leads them just over a length. In the second spot, the only key. They followed two lengths by Kalis. In behind that comes Double Ante, and Lady of Shamrock is still last. No change in the order. Now seven would cover them all. They make their way to the half-mile pole in the Santa Barbara, and Viva Carina, now pushed along a little, will start to quicken them with a half-mile to run. In the second spot comes the only key. Kalis is in third, four lengths off the leaders. Then comes Double Ante, and Lady of Shamrock still got seven to make up. They're coming to the top of the lane now, and now Viva Carina sent for home on the lead. But the only keys holding her right there in second, and Kalis moving in in the white cap, and now here comes Lady of Shamrock on the inside. 
and Lady of Shamrock, Fuller Run, skimming the rail, going to try to sneak through down there. And Lady of Shamrock's come from last to second. Is she going to go through on the inside? She sure is. Viva Karina going to try to keep her at bay. Lady of, Sha oh, Lady of Shamrock took up there, and Viva Karina's going on to win it. Viva Karina won it. Lady of Shamrock second, and Kalis finished third. And you saw that incident deep in the stretch. Victor Espinosa seemingly coming over on Rafael Bejarano. That is the way the stewards saw it. Uh, Viva Karina disqualified from first at 8-1 to one and placed second. Lady of Shamrock elevated to victory in the Santa Barbara, returning $2.60 for John Sadler. Vina Karina now plays second. And Kales finishes third in the five horse field in the Santa Barbara. Down the hill we go Saturday afternoon in the San Simeon Handicap, obviously even money. And uh, away they go to a perfect start. Chips all in in the white blinkers and Sirocco strike from the inside gate is very fast as well. Chosen miracle right there. Now here comes obviously and obviously absolutely flying. Obviously just went right by them like they weren't there and obviously he's tugged away to a three length lead now. Then we come back to coast to the back of the leading group and it's another six lengths back to drill. Down the hill they come and obviously intent on flying. Has it by two and a half lengths. Chips all in is right there. Sirocco strike on the inside of that. They are then being followed by Chosen Miracle. They're getting closer to that leader now. On the far side is Coast and five back to Drill. They're at the top of the lane and obviously only by a length now. Sirocco strike is right there between them. Chips all in on the outside. Chosen Miracle goes for a run on the inside and Coast is in with a big shot on the grandstand side. Even Drill is starting to run on late. Obviously he's all hot on the lead. Goes on with it. Taken on by Chips all in. Chips all in. Obviously past the 16 together. Chosen Miracle can't get through at the rail. Chips all in. Chips all in. Going to get up. Chips all in has won it. Chips all in and Tyler Bay's beat, obviously. Third was chosen miracle and then drill. Chips all in. Jeff Mullen sends out this runner, second choice in the wagering. Tyler Bay's pilots to score the one half length victory, turning $6.60. Obviously, the even money favorite finishes second. Chosen miracle, third in the 46th running of the San Simeon. Sunday afternoon, the 74th running of the San Juan Capistrano down the hill, the about distance of a mile and three quarter, Sky Kingdom, six to five. Field for the San Juan Capistrano sent on their mile and three quarter journey and interaction looked like purposely slow to come out of there is quite content to be last early. Quickest in this ride here is Sky Kingdom along the inside. Sky Kingdom is joined by Smart Ellis. They go clear by just over two. Fire with Fire is settled down in the third position. Then there's a gap of three back to all squared away in the fourth spot. Got to be six off those leaders. And then we come back to Lime Ricky and Interactions moving up inside of that. Eight lengths would cover the lot. They come down the hill now, and it is the favorite Sky Kingdom going along at a very slow pace out here. Long distance, but he's certainly in no hurry at all. Taking them along as slow as he can as Sky Kingdom. Smart Ellis is tracking from the second position. All squared away is pretty keen to go on down at the rail. Fire with fire in the four spot. Only three lengths off these leaders now, and Lime Ricky on the far side. And Interaction just cantering along at the back. Six lengths would cover the lot. So they come to the top of the stretch first time round, and it is still Sky Kingdom, not getting any pressure at all now. Ears Prick just lopes them along on the lead. Smart Ellis has been second throughout. They've been followed by All Squared Away in third. Fire with Fire in the red colours, racing back in fourth. Interaction now moving up a little closer down at the rail alongside Lime Ricky. Still only six lengths would cover the lot. They pass the stands first time round and Sky Kingdom continues to lead them with Smart Ellis now cutting into that lead from second. Three back to all squared away, fire with fire. Interaction still quite content to sit second last. He's got six to make up and at the back line, Ricky. So they've covered half of the journey now in the San Juan and it is still Sky Kingdom at the rail. Now Smart Ellis comes to put a bit of pressure on him now and they're going to quicken just slightly as they go down the back stretch. All squared away is right there in third. Fire with fire is still fourth. 
Interaction still just lopes along in the fifth spot. He's only got four and a half to make up now. And Lime Ricky being patiently ridden from the back. A half mile left to go. Still these two pacemakers out here. Sky Kingdom at the rail and Smart Ellis. Now here comes All Squared Away. And All Squared Away now turns the pressure on into the turn. Fire with Fire is right there. Interaction being confidently ridden down at the rail. Interaction's only three off them. Lime Ricky last at the top of the lane and Sky Kingdom has suddenly folded. Sky Kingdom's gone. On the outside, all squared away. On the inside, Smart Ellis and now Interaction has let loose down the center. Homeward bound, all squared away. Interaction now sticks his neck out and comes gamely along the inside. All squared away, Interaction. It's a thriller in the San Juan. Interaction, those big, leaping, long strides, striking the front, close at the wire, very close. Interaction, all squared away. And it's close then for third as well. Smart Ellis, Lime Ricky, and then Fire with Fire and Sky Kingdom was last. But Interaction under Joe Talamo off the pace last early, sometimes in these long distance turf races. Boy, that is a tough road to hoe, but Interaction for Ron McAnally scores the $10 victory all squared away, who looked very good deep in the stretch, holds on for second. Smart Ellis, third. Sky Kingdom, your 6-5 to five favorite, finishes last in the San Juan. Sunday Stakes action from the Big A. Three-year-old fillies in the Road Princess Stakes. Kawaii Kate, 1-20. to 20. And they're off. Kawaii Kate gets off to a good start and has gone to the lead. Secret Union has come out running in second. Kelly got frosty, well held while third on the outside, and Kimono is rating back and forth. It is Kawai Katie, the leader. Kelly got frosty in her hip pocket, second on the outside, as Kawai Katie sails along here in the opening stages. Kelly got frosty, followed by Secret Union. 24 flat, well within the comfort zone of Kawai Katie, was that first quarter. So, Kawai Katie, they have conceded to lead to this one to nine favorite. Light pressure from Kelly Got Frosty. Secret Union and Kimona, one, two, three, four, as they round the far turn now. Kawai Katie still holding that lead. First quarter was 24 flat, second quarter 23 and three. And now Kelly Got Frosty will challenge Kawai Katie for the lead. So the race is on as the field turns for home. Kawai Katie. Holding on, indeed opening up a two-length lead here on Kelly Gaunt Frosty. Father Mac, Secret Union, and Kimona. In the final furlong, just a light hand ride here from Javier Castellano, and he's going to gear down Kawai Katie. In a good effort. If you could actually call it an effort at all, one by three very easy lengths over Kelly Gaunt Frosty. The final time was 1 minute 23 and 1 fifth seconds. And ladies and gentlemen, you don't see this very often, but all four ran around the racetrack without changing position. They also ran in the order of their odds. And Kawaii Katie scores the impressive three and one quarter length victory for Stone Street Stables. Javier Castellano, Todd Pletcher. There was a minus win pool of $16,611. Boy, you don't see that very often. Kawaii Katie. Now six for seven and undefeated going one turn. That wraps up this week's edition of Horses and Courses. Enjoy your stakes action from the round of the country and join us next time.